Imperfect Paradise takes us inside LA's iconic members-only club, how one queer hobbyist magician fell in and out of love with the Magic Castle. Binge all four episodes of Imperfect Paradise The Castle on Elias.com or wherever you get podcasts. LAist Studios. Today on the LA Report. The LA Dodgers land another big acquisition after Shohei Otani's signing. California's fuel fee to pay for road repairs is becoming obsolete since electric vehicles don't use gas. We can continue that tradition very easily with mileage fees because it's it's very directly tailored to how much you use. And a rising star in film and TV faces an uncertain future now in the industry after court verdicts this week. Good morning, it's Friday, December 22nd. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the LA Report from LAS 89.3. Excited about baseball superstar Shohei Otani signing with the Dodgers? Well, now you can cheer even louder. The Dodgers have teamed up Otani with another Japanese superstar, pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto. LAS host Nick Roman has more. True story. I was watching Moneyball last night, the movie about how baseball executive Billy Bean figured out how to build a winner for the Oakland Athletics when they didn't have two nickels to rub together. That's when I found out the Dodgers, who have gold doubloons and not nickels, had signed Yoshinobu Yamamoto to a 12-year contract worth $325 million. Well, who is he? Easily the best pitcher in Japan three years running and the second most sought-after free agent this offseason after Shohei Otani, who signed a 10-year, $700 million contract for the Dodgers just a few days ago. That's a billion dollars plus in free agent contracts handed out by the Dodgers in two weeks' time. Oh, it's Moneyball, all right, only with real money. For L.A. at 89.3, I'm Nick Roman. Some of this year's most anticipated films performed below expectations amid the double strikes in Hollywood. We spoke with the senior film editor for The Hollywood Reporter, Rebecca Keegan. She says that doesn't mean it wasn't a good year. The box office is approaching about $9 billion domestically, which would make it the best year since the pandemic. The box office hasn't yet returned to its pre-pandemic levels. 10 to $11 billion domestically a year was standard before COVID. Rebecca says that's because studios aren't putting as many films in theaters these days. And she says some experts are predicting a 5% drop in ticket sales worldwide next year, an after effect of the writers and actors' strikes. A big story on her beat this week is Disney's Marvel Studios dropping Jonathan Majors from the fifth Avengers movie, in which he was expected to reprise his Kang the Conqueror role. The studio parted ways with the actor after he was convicted in New York this week of assault and harassment, stemming from a confrontation with his former girlfriend. Rebecca says it's uncertain what conviction will mean for majors going forward. I think what's clear is in terms of being a major player at a company like Disney, which is most conservative in terms of what it expects of its actors, things are very uncertain right now. And what will matter will be if other people come forward with allegations against majors, if there are further legal issues, sort of how he handles this case going forward. Majors is scheduled to be sentenced February 6th. As California moves away from gasoline-powered vehicles, the state's legislative analyst's office is out with a report that says the state must find a new revenue stream for the transportation system. CAP Radio's Manola Sakaida has more. California's transportation system is funded in part by fuel taxes. But as the demand for gas declines and more people transition to electric vehicles, the report projects a net transportation funding decline of about $4.4 billion, or 31 percent, within the next decade. Asha Weinstein Agrawal is a professor of regional and urban planning at San Jose State. She says that by the 1930s, a fuel tax was implemented throughout the United States. States instituted a fuel tax as a way directly to have a user fee to charge drivers for their use of the roads and then plow that money back into building and maintaining the system. She says one solution could be a mileage fee, sometimes called a road charge. The idea behind this approach is to issue a charge based on the number of miles driven in a vehicle. She says it's similar to the original idea behind a fuel tax. We can continue that tradition very easily with mileage fees because it's it's very directly tailored to 
how much you use. So it's similar, like how much electricity in your home are you, you using and you pay proportionately. Agrawal says the success of this fee would depend on exactly how the state decides to approach it. In Sacramento, I'm Enola Sakaida. Coming up, there's a new pregnancy-related benefit for Medi-Cal recipients, but not a lot of people are taking advantage of it yet. Hi, it's Suzanne Watley. The L.A. Report is perfect for getting you a quick hit of the day's top stories. For a deeper and broader look at the news, join me for NPR's Morning Edition. Starting at 5 a.m., we get you the day's breaking news stories, local, national, and worldwide, and give you a little joy and delight to start your day right. Morning Edition, weekdays from 5 to 9 on the radio at LAist 89.3 and on the LAist app. On Imperfect Paradise, we take you inside one of LA's most iconic, mysterious, and exclusive clubs. It is Victorian, dark, moody, patterned wallpapers and old artifacts of magic. How one queer hobbyist magician fell in love with the Magic Castle. And what happened when that love collided with the realities of an entrenched members-only space. Binge all four episodes of Imperfect Paradise The Castle on Elias.com or wherever you get podcasts. Back now to the L.A. Report. The city and county of Los Angeles are getting $61.2 million in state funding to support the creation of 516 affordable homes. Governor Newsom's office has announced the third round of funding for Project Home Key, which aims to increase affordable housing throughout the state. A total of $182 million in this round of Home Key awards will fund nine projects in California, three of which are in L.A. County. It's been nearly a year now since California's insurance program for low-income families started paying for a new support during pregnancy and childbirth. LAist senior reporter Mariana Dale has an update on the Medi-Cal doula benefit. Doula support is associated with positive health outcomes during pregnancy and birth. The Medi-Cal benefit could provide doulas to more than 100,000 families a year, but that level of access hasn't materialized yet. As of July, at least 50 Medi-Cal members had received doula services, according to California's Department of Health Care Services, though the data is incomplete. One challenge is that the Medi-Cal enrollment process can be difficult for doulas to navigate. Mariana has collected resources for doulas and for Medi-Cal members interested in the benefit. It. You can find the list at laist.com slash pregnancy. The storm that's been moving in off the Pacific the last couple of days is on its way to Arizona, and most of the rainfall will be in inland areas today. The chance of showers and thunderstorms will gradually decrease late today and overnight. You can expect dry and warmer weather next week, and the warm-up may bring high temperatures above the seasonal averages. For listening to the LA Report. You can read more news at laist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge.